What's going on, y'all? Greg with Greg said it. Y'all, it's a new year. Some promising stuff going on. We see college playoff is on and rocking, on and popping. And two surprise teams from what everybody thought and all the conspiracy theorists think, you know, with that the SEC thing. We see Alabama got whooped by Michigan, man. Michigan was bringing it. It was sacking them like it was sacking Shadoo. I felt like Colorado was out there the way they were coming through there and the linemen. So clearly, they can't trick linemen because it's like the linemen was doing the same thing they were doing for Shadoo. Maybe just not prepared or not well coached or what. But it ain't always on purpose, I guess we see. Unless that, that, unless that right tackle over there, Alabama, was, he looked just like, uh, what was the guy? Was it Harden? It don't hit neither man. Two men come by you, confused about both you and pick now one of them and block. I mean, it was sacking the quarterback left and right. And it shows you the importance and the significance of having a good quarterback. Because that's what Washington has. And without the quarterback they have, you know, I mean, he can throw that ball deep. He's accurate. He don't make a lot of mistakes. He ain't leading in the, in the, in the, in the yards by mistake. And who right there with him but should do it with no line. So it show you what you got. Washington show you what we have. You got somebody that can block. That's Colorado. I don't care what you say. The defense step up and they got a line. That's what Colorado can look like. And that's what everybody underestimated. Oh, Texas automatically. And oh, it's about Texas, Alabama. Oh, Texas. Oh, it just looked over Washington. I was, I think about it. people don't respect that Pac-12. They really don't. Pac-12 is one of the most battle tested conferences. I can't speak for another year. I'm a prime guy, whatever you want to call it. But that was the most battle tested. They had the most, from what I've seen, the most top-ranked teams in one conference. It used to be like that in the SEC. This year, definitely ACC didn't have it. Definitely the Big 12 didn't have it. And the Big 10 didn't have it. They're very top-heavy conferences. But Pac-12 was very evenly distributed to, to the sense where I think a lot of them guys did good, the ones who made it to the bowls. You know, the bowls is weird. People not playing. You can't really fairly assess. But you think about it. Pat 12 had a lot of good quarterbacks. And by that, a lot of good teams. You see what USC did to Louisville. You can do apples to apples you want. They, it's very few teams that can cover that dynamic display of receivers. When you have three, four, five receivers and you got a guy who can get them that ball, most teams ain't built like that. Just like most teams ain't built for a, a real just big bona fide offensive line and a big running back like a Derrick Henry. You just ain't built for that. You just going to get bashed. Your linebackers, them new grown men coming at you, it's just hard to stop it. Then you got a decent passing game. That's what Alabama used to be. Alabama used to have dynamic running backs behind that dynamic line. That's what made them hard to stop, not just having a line for the heck of it. They had big boys on that line. Then you put some people like Waddle and, and Smith and all them boys at receiver. That's what made them unstoppable. That's what made LSU tough with Bill Row back in the day. We had Chase and you had Jefferson. Those make great teams. A good line, dynamic running back, and some dynamic receivers. That's what makes a strong offense. I believe Colorado has that. I believe having Alto McCaskill, a quality running back like that, you got a Savion, you got a, a scat back like Dillon. I think that's exceptional. I don't, I don't, I don't know what makes you not see that. Dillon showed you what he can do in space at TCU. They just didn't use him right the rest of the year. They tried to use him like a regular running back. Maybe because that like they didn't know who's going to be the running back. But you didn't know how that excuse. You got a better line. You got you got some 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 experienced running backs back there. Savion, he, he hungry. He'll pounce that thing in there. You got McCaskill, who's ready, who show you what kind of big time runner he can be, with some blocking. Then you bring in these dynamic core receivers, man. Colorado can be that type of team. That's what I'm telling you. Washington is a very balanced team. I hear they was one of the best special teams, uh, kickoff re coverage, uh, kickoff return, whatever. They were good at special teams. Their defense is, is solid. The offense is solid. The quarterback play is solid. The running back play is deep. You know, I don't dynamic running back, but he's good. You know, and they got some good receivers. They ain't got a whole bunch of good receivers, but they got some solid two or three. They solid. You know, you don't see uh, pennants, pennants on the ground a lot. You don't see them getting sacked a lot. They don't miss a lot of assignments. 
it shows you what is possible. And you're not respecting that conference when you got some very good defensive teams in the Pac-12 that could challenge you to get you ready for this playoff. And you go against some, some dynamic offenses that can throw that ball. I mean, you beat Oregon twice. Oregon won the slouch. They had a top five player in the country, a uh, 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 Heisman runner, upper, upper, upper. You know, Heisman worthy quarterback. Don't play college about 10 years. You know, then you got a guy who you got a running back, just that's a couple running backs. They're just the typical Oregon running backs. Swift, some dynamic receivers, fast, quick. And you beat them twice. How do you not respect them? Unless you don't respect Oregon, as you don't respect the conference, right? You got teams like Oregon State you had to beat. Decent. They don't have to be the best in the country, but they better than the teams than a lot of these people are playing in other conferences. That's who you had to beat to get where you are. You weren't in the top favorite conference where it was just two, three tough teams and everybody else just kind of like roll over. They had some tough games to get there. Washington had some tough games to get to to that to the playoff. To be undefeated. It's impressive because everybody else beat each other. It's impressive what they did. And you look at, oh, they, they had a tough game against Arizona and all these other teams. You know, Arizona was decent. Arizona State came out decent at times. Stanford they can play tough a little bit. They're missing some pieces. But you had a lot of talent. They didn't play at Colorado, of course. But it's a lot of talent. And they just didn't have it all put together, like a Washington, on both sides of the ball. But they had a strong defense, but all right offense, or a strong offense, all right defense. Washington has both, but they had to, to measure themselves against that. And here they are going to the national championship. Surely, people don't know what to think because they didn't. They thought Michigan was scared of Alabama. They thumped Alabama. They hit them in the mouth. Washington hit Texas in the mouth. Everybody knew Texas. So these two are the two Cinderella teams from a, from a. You know, neither one of these teams expect to be in the championship. So now he's like, "What do you choose? <laughs> Who can you look over now?" You definitely can't look over Washington. Michigan have a strong defense. Washington have a shot. And when I say Washington have a shot, the type of team they have built with the quarterback they have, I can fully and confidently say it reminds me a lot of the type of talent that Colorado can have next year. With a strong offensive line, strong backfield, Strong receiver core. Strong defensive line that can go get after you. Got them, them ball hunters, you know, back there in the secondary. Do they got stuff to work on? Can't do no elementary tackling. Can't be jumping off sides and no elementary penalties. Can't be, you know, doing a lot of bonehead pass interference. Now the ref got a lot to do with that. But you just got to be disciplined. And... Of course, you can't have boneheaded coaching decisions, not know how to manage the clock and not calling plays, not using your personnel. You know, that's up to the coaches. Still waiting to see who's going to come in at that offensive coordinator. I think it's Sherman. But we're still trying to see who's coming in at that defensive coordinator. It hasn't been announced, right? So all of that's going to play a lot into what's possible and how this team will be managed. Seeing what Washington is doing is very encouraging because a lot of people overlook them, but they solid. they solid in the right places, and they've been solid all year. And that's why I spent for Colorado next year, believe it or not. People say, oh, you say they go 12-0. I don't have to say anything like that. I do think that they should be at least 10 and 2, at the very least. I don't have a low bar. I don't have, they need to go and sit 500 or you know, win seven, eight games. No, they, they need to win these ten. So from there, yeah, they can go twelve and zero. It's gonna be some tough games. Just like Washington had a couple close games, but they, it's possible with the right decision making and the talent they got. It's possible. But hey, that's just me. Greg said it. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Y'all.